Renderless components are design pattern and view that allow you to separate your logic from the actual UI of your app. In a nutshell, they don't render any of their own HTML, but instead use scope slots. This allows for flexibility in the way things get rendered while keeping the logic reusable. For a real life example, ViewUse has a component package where utilities like UseMouse or OnClickOutside can be used as components instead of composables. So in this video, we're gonna walk through the process of creating a renderless component and then talk about the pros and cons of this approach. So let's start with the to-do list and say we have a ref of items, a way to toggle whether they're done or not, a way to add new items. And then in our template, we display all the to-dos and also have an input to add new ones. So right now, this to-do list component has both the logic for our to-do list and all the UI displaying it. So it's a reusable component, but there's not really a way to customize how things look. So let's separate everything out using slots. Eventually, we want our to-do list component to not have any UI of its own, but instead use a slot that's provided by the parent render context. And to do this, we need to pass all the logic and data to our slot using scope slots. So First, let's say we want to factor out this v4 loop so our parent component can customize the way it renders. We'll replace it with a slot and then bind our to-dos as a property here. And this creates what's called a scope slot. And if you don't know what that is, I'll leave a link to a video I've made in the description below. But anyways, we can go back to where we're using our to-do list component. And instead of making it self-closing, we want to render our list items inside. First, we need access to our to-dos though. And we can get them by saying vslot and then grabbing our to-dos. And the reason we have to use object destructuring is vslot receives an object of all the properties bound to our slot. So if we want to access to-dos directly, we have to destructure it. But now that we have access to this array, we can just render them in a v4 like we were doing earlier. And if we take a quick look at our app, we can see that it's still rendering the same. Then to add the functionality for toggling and adding new to-dos, we can also bind those functions to our slot, add them to our v slot, and then use the same code that we had inside of our component, but this time injecting it through the slot. Then the last thing to do to make this component renderless is extract out this unordered list so that the only thing in our template is our scoped slot. So now our to-do list component has all the logic needed to create a to-do list, but doesn't limit the UI in any way. So in this first example, we have the same exact markup, so it looks the same, but here's another example that still uses the to-do list component and the values from the scope slot. But as you can see, it renders completely different. So while this is a really cool pattern to think about, the view docs actually recommend to carefully consider when you're actually using this. So let's take a look at why. But first, I want to say thanks to the sponsor of this video, Storyblock. Storyblock is a headless CMS that I've been using recently. I've been using the Nux3 module, and I like how you can build view components that are called blocks, and then directly build with them inside Storyblock's visual editor. You can change the options that are then passed as props, so it really gives the best of both worlds where it's easy to use, but also doesn't limit the development side of things. And even though Storyblock works with any tech stack, I'm slightly biased towards Vue, and Storyblock has a fantastic Vue client. In fact, they're super supportive of the Vue community and just became diamond sponsors of the project, so I definitely recommend showing them some love, and if you want to check them out, there's a link in the description. All right, let's get back to the video. Like we were talking about, the Vue docs actually say that renderless components can often be replaced by composables, and this makes a lot of sense when we think about what renderless components do. They provide logic, but don't impact the UI, and encapsulating logic is the exact use case that composables are meant for. And plus, whenever we make a component instance, even if it is renderless, there is some overhead that can impact your site's performance. So Vue's official recommendation is to use composables when we're just wrapping pure logic, and then let components do what components do best, which is working with logic and the visual layout. I'm curious what y'all think about this. I definitely agree that most of the time it's cleaner to wrap your logic in composables, but I can see some cases where if only a small portion of your template requires certain data, it can make your code more readable if if all that logic is encapsulated in one part of your code rather than your composable at the top and then your template somewhere down here. The other use case I kind of find compelling is using renderless components when you're building flexible component libraries. For example, Tailwind's headless UI comes with fully customizable components. So I think that this could be another place where it makes sense. Let me know your thoughts on this down below and I'll see you in the next one.